I'm Dong Qi from Tsinghua University. It's my pleasure to present our work, Anomaly Detection in the Open World. This is a joint work with State Grid Cooperation of China. Nowadays, cyber crimes are becoming more professional and coordinated. Earlier firewalls, web gateways, and intrusion prevention tools are enough to be secure, but now skilled attackers can bypass across nearly all these defense systems. In this context, anomaly detection has been used in many security domains for the great, uh, for the great promise of learning without anomalies and detecting unforeseen threats. With the emergence of deep learning, it has shown a great potential to build security applications. The, uh, the advantage of deep learning methods is the ability of learning nonlinear and complex features from massive data. So far, researchers have developed deep learning-based anomaly detection for several security applications, such as network intrusion detection, log anomaly detection, lateral movement detection, and host-based threat detection. Unfortunately, the great success of machine learning and deep learning methods are based on the closed word assumption, which is testing data must be similar to the training data, known as the IID assumption. However, in open world applications, the distribution of testing data can change over time in unforeseen ways. In machine learning community, this phenomenon is also called the concept drift problem. Uh, this can be quite common in security domain, for example, the evolution of malware will make the statistical features keep changing, which will cause the performance aging of malware classifier. Frankly speaking, the model aging can be one of the most frustrating problems in real-world applications. The great performance on the validation side, but overwhelming false positives and false negatives in real deployment will easily make people lose the face of machine learning. Actually, concept drift has been well studied in the context of supervised learning. In security domains, there are some of excellent work previously detecting concept drift in malware classifications such as Transcend and K. In machine learning community, there are tens of related work. Uh, one remarkable direction is out of distribution detection. Basically, this works detect drifting or out of distribution symbols based on the prior knowledge of in-distribution. As shown in this picture, if a symbol doesn't belong to the distribution of the existing classes, it will be detected. However, anomaly detection models are built on only normal data, so they are immune to the drift of abnormal behaviors, but comes at the price of more severe impact when the distribution of normality shifts. A normality shift is also common since the user behaviors and systems themselves can differ and evolve over time, such as uh, system patches and new devices appear in the network. As shown in the red picture, in anomaly detection, uh, we only have the knowledge of normality. So uh, even a simple device from it, we cannot tell whether it's a drift or it's an anomaly. This is a big uh, this is a big challenge for detecting normality shift, and previous work for supervised learning is not suitable in this case. That's why we highlight the difference of normality shift against concept drift. We remark the first key insight here is for anomaly detection without ground truth label, anomaly shift and real anomaly is not distinguishable. To mitigate concept drift or uh, normality shift problem, there are basically two pipelines. The first one, which is often used, is to periodically retrain the model with all data or train a new model to assemble. However, we think this is not suitable for security domains as continuous training is labor intensive and hard to obtain explanation of the shift. And the second solution is to determine, then investigate, and finally adapt to the drift. And this is our scope. So the second insight is we need to decide whether, when, and how shift occurs before adapting model to the shift. To detect the shift, the key question is how to represent the distribution. Ideally, we want to capture the distribution of data from feature space and detect the change. However, the high-dimensional distribution is intractable in practice. 
So uh, an alternative method is to use the distribution of model output probabilities or anomaly scores, uh, as model outputs are highly relevant to the performance. In this way, we are basing one-dimensional scores instead of high-dimensional features. Uh, we summarize the third key insight is the distribution of normality can be represented by uh, the distribution of model outputs. Uh, with all these insights in mind, we present the open world anomaly detection framework called for OWAD to continuously detect, explain, and adapt to normality shift. Uh, here is the framework which consists of four steps. I will introduce the basic idea of OWAD with the toy example in this figure. Uh, suppose before any shift, we have five uh, samples in blue to represent the old distribution of normality. We phase them into the uh, deep learning anomaly detection model and get the model outputs, which are anomaly scores or probabilities. And suppose after any uh, uh, after after shift, we have another five samples in green from the new distribution. We also get their model outputs. Uh, however, the original outputs of two distributions are hard to distinguish. As shown in this figure, they are all concentrated between uh, 0 0.9 and 1. So uh, the first step of OWAD is to force a transformation on the original model outputs which we call calibration. We expect the calibrated outputs to provide probabilistic information. In this example, we transform uh, the outputs, uh, uh, the file outputs in the old distribution to be the percentile of original outputs, which is uh, one-fifths, two-fifths, three-fifths, uh, so on and so forth. As we can see, the distribution of outputs become more distinguishable after calibration. However, in practice, there won't be only five samples. So we need to uh, compare two distributions of calibrated outputs more strictly. That's why we introduced the second step, shift detection. Here we conduct a hypothesis test on whether two sets are from the same distribution and they use p-value to determine whether there is a shift, uh, which is a common practice in statistics. Uh, obviously, normality has shifted in this example. So the next step is to investigate and explain normality shift. Uh, here we want to find the most important samples in the new distribution that induce the shift. We formulate an optimization problem to assign a weight for each one in 10 samples from both old and new distribution. The weight indicates whether the sample can represent the new distribution after shift. The intuition is to use a mixture of old and new samples to reconstruct the new normality distribution, as shown in this figure. Uh, here, we, we don't use all samples from the new distribution because new samples need to be labeled, and we just want to lower this labeling overhead. As shown from the feature space in this example, we use three samples from the old distribution and two from new distribution for reconstruction. Uh, we can also obtain some insights from this explanation result. First, these three samples remain in the new distribution. Then these two are no longer normal in the new distribution. And these two are newly become normal in the new distribution. Next, uh, we need to label the selected two samples in new distribution to filter out anomalies. Here we assume they are both normal. We can find that the advantages, uh, the advantage of OWAD is we only need to label two of five samples. Finally, in the last step, we update the model to uh, to adapt to the shift. We retrain the deep learning model with the samples selected from the explanation results as they can represent the uh, new distribution. To avoid forgetting useful knowledge when updating model, we will assign different weights for each sample, uh, which is exactly the same to the weight uh, derived from the aforementioned shift explanation. Uh, OK, that's the basic idea of OWAD. 
uh, note that the whole procedure can work iteratively to ensure that uh, the anomaly detection model is always up to date and robust to uh, normality shift. And for technical details of uh, uh, of these four steps in OWAD, please refer to our paper. Okay, let's move to evaluation. We evaluate OWAD in three security applications, detective, network intrusion, log anomaly, and data movement. We use representative detection systems from top tier conferences, and we select data sets with a long time span in months or years to reflect the normality in a long period. And uh, we detect shift periodically according to each time span. So the first question we ask is whether normality shift occurs in uh, these uh, security applications. The answer is yes. From the showing figures, uh, which are distributions over time, we can observe that normality shift in security domain is quite common and different for uh, each application. So uh, a case-by-case -case analysis with our explanation method is uh, necessary. Next, we perform an end-to-end -end evaluation after adapting to the shift and, op uh, and observe to what extent the performance of model is improved by OWAD and other baseline methods. As shown in this figure, we simulate a scenario and split the data into different time points, uh, which is time 0, time 1, 2, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, in T0, training set is used to train the original anomaly detection model. In T1 and later, validation set is used to detect and adapt to shift, and uh, test set is for evaluation. We conduct two experiments. The first is only adapt to shift one time and observe the performance in subsequent time points. Uh, the second one is to detect and adapt at each time point. In single adaptation, we fix the budget of labels as 30%, uh, which means all methods can use 30% labeled samples at most for updating the model. Here, uh, y-axis is the model performance, which is higher the better. We can observe that OWAD outperforms other, uh, other approaches at the adaptation time, uh, namely T1 or T2 and can also mitigate the performance degradation in subsequent time points. In multiple adaptation, we relax the budget of labels to observe the label overhead and the model performance together at the same time. From the result of model performance, which is higher the better, and uh, label overhead, which is lower the better, we conclude that OWAD can achieve better results uh, be significantly less required labels. We also observe the number of false positives and false negatives before and after adaptation. Uh, and we can observe that OWAD is the only approach that can reduce both false positives and false negatives. Uh, here are some takeaways. Uh, first, Normative shift. First, normative shift is quite common and complicated in security domains. Second, model outputs after calibration can efficiently to represent the normative distribution. Third, although uh, labeling is inevitable for handling normative shift, OWAD can achieve uh, better performance with lower labels. Last. OWAD is shown to be able uh, shown to be able to reduce both false positives and false negatives, and we have released the code of OWAD on GitHub. You can try it for your own anomaly detection models. Uh, okay, that's all. Thanks for your attention, and I'm ready to take questions. Uh, thank you very much. This is, I think, my favorite talk that I've seen of the day. So, um, you know, you, you're tackling a very hard problem. So, thank you for for even attempting it. Um, anomalies in security-related data need to be accurately labeled, though, for the results to be usable. And so you've sort of hinted at this, but I'm, I'm trying to get 
clarification, how do you ensure that your shifted training set is not just, you know, shifting to a left important anomaly set or, you know, alternatively, how do you ensure your shifts are not increasing the false negative rate? I, it looks like you used about two, two or three training sets and, and the AUC actually dropped, you know, continuously. And I worry over, you know, a long period of time, uh, you're still going to have to retrain, right? Because, you know, you only use two or three sets and I'm thinking 30 or, you know, a year later or something like that. You're still making improvement. I don't want to, I don't want to downplay your results. Um, I'm really intrigued, but I'm curious, you know, did you study really, really long trends? Uh, so uh, I think our question is how to ensure the false negative is also decreased, uh, right? Yeah, how do you ensure? Another how, how do you ensure? How do you ensure you have a really good recall rate? Now, as you can see from this result, um, the big advantages of uh, OWD is to reduce false positive because we uh, mainly uh, focus on uh, the normality. If normality change, there will be many uh, false positive rates. So, so we we mainly focus on reduce the false positive. But uh, if we can actually, uh, we can we can uh, we can capture the the, the normality after shift. I think uh, the abnormality is just a set of normality. Uh, then if we can uh, accurately capture uh, the shift of normality, then uh, we can also uh, uh, capture the abnormality. So uh, in this way, we think this is the uh, uh, probable reason of why our method can also uh, decrease false negatives, uh, uh, also also uh, the recall you ask. And I hope this question, uh, this answer helps. Hello, thank you for the excellent talk. My, I know the topic of your paper is anomaly detection, but I was curious, did you also explore other attacks uh, because, you know, this is basically a binary classification problem. But did you explore other, uh, you know, data sets which had uh, different kind of attacks? Uh, more than one? Attacks? Yes. You mean, uh, you mean attack okay. on... I mean, this uh, is anomaly detection, right? So basically, either it, the, da the data is either normal or it is uh, okay. an outlier data set. But not just attack data sets, any other different forms of... Uh, uh, data distributions, not just normal and abnormal. Uh, you mean in uh, like supervised, uh, supervised learning? It could be supervised uh, learning also. Uh, okay, actually, there are many uh, works of uh, 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 for uh, supervised learning. Uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, here, transcend, Kate, and and uh, transcendent is. Uh, or for uh, supervised learning, and specifically for for malware detection, uh, for for the concept of problem in uh, malware classification, and uh, in their works they uh, they may uh, focus more on uh, how attack behaviors uh, changes or shifts uh, do uh, changes or shifts over time. So I think these papers uh, may have. I was curious about uh, your model, uh, you know, your framework. Did you use other kind of data set? But it looks like uh, you focused on anomaly detection. Well, yes, yes, we want to focus on anomaly detection and we focus on uh, the shift of uh, normality. Uh, we actually uh, do not care about uh, the shift of uh, shift of attack behavior because it's out of scope of anomaly detection. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So one thing I uh, noticed in your, um, when you talked about how often you needed to retrain the models, that was of, or how, time, how often you need to recalibrate, that was in like months, but something I've seen in like log data for anomaly detection is that even during like a day, there will be a quite significant shift, for example, when when everyone goes home from work, there's suddenly no activity. Um, but is it because these data sets work on such a long 
time scale that each day doesn't become very important or what's sort of the what's the time scale we're working at here i guess that's my question uh, uh okay i think it's a very good question uh actually uh in practice the timing of detecting shifts uh really requires a case-by-case -case analysis uh, i think a common approach is to uh, periodically uh, collect data and detect the shifts um, but in our evaluation, uh, we uh, the criteria of uh, our selection is based on the uh, time span of each each data set. Um, I guess I'm not familiar with the data set, so I don't know what the because I I one set that I looked at was like okay. seven million events during one day, and then the shift is quite significant when you go into night. So, uh, oh. Okay. Yeah, I think this is a, a common question for uh, anomaly detection. Uh, if you only train your model with uh, one day uh, data or only train your model uh, use uh, more new data, then the, the performance of model will, uh, will quickly decrease uh, after morning or, 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 uh, or after some uh, Time, time span. Uh, so I think one possible uh, one possible uh, mitigation to such problem is you can first you can collect more time span, uh, 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 more data to train your model, and this will make your uh, model more stable and more robust to the uh, potential uh, potential uh, drift. Hey. Um, thank you for your pre presentation. Uh, my question is uh, kind of similar to the previous one. So how do you determine, uh, I noticed in your testing validation training data, you uh, divide your data set to time zero, time one, et cetera. How do you determine like the time window for each data? Like, I think because the data size will matter uh, if the um, time window is too small, you uh, the novelty probably didn't change. Then you are doing, not doing um, like if the, the time window is too large, then it's probably take uh, too much time to process. How do you determine like how um the, what's the time window? Uh, okay, in the evaluation, because we don't have uh, uh don't have any background knowledge of this uh, data set because these data sets are not collected by us. So uh, we do not have any ground truth of why uh, why the shift occurs. Uh, so uh, we just periodically collect and detect the shift. Uh, I think in practice, uh, I suggest uh, you can uh, you can based on some ground knowledge, uh, based on some background knowledge of your monitoring system, uh, for example, if you know that your system have uh, have a big update this afternoon, uh, big, up, uh, big this afternoon, I, I suggest you can uh, detect the shift after after the big update. I think this is a, a, a more uh, more suitable way to uh, determine the time of uh, detecting shift. Mm 